Anita Ekberg was a Swedish actress who rose to prominence thanks to the Italian feature La Dolce Vita after floundering in Hollywood for a number of years. Her role in the film took advantage of her sexuality and immense good looks, and her stunning figure took audiences by storm with such volatility that the Vatican itself declared the film immoral. Following her success in the film, she continued acting in both Europe and Hollywood until her career went downhill later in life. Since her death in 2015, audiences still remain curious about the mysterious actress who took the world by storm in La Dolce Vita. Join Facts First as we take a look at the stunning figure of Anita Ekberg. Anita Ekberg was born in Sweden, September 29, 1931. She was one of eight children. After several of her siblings had found success in local beauty pageants, Anita was encouraged to try to join their ranks. Her first beauty pageant was in 1950, and she proved unnatural. She won the pageant and subsequently competed in and won the Miss Sweden pageant the same year. Following that, she had her sights set on Miss Universe. Anita Ekberg found herself competing in the Miss Universe pageant in 1951, at which point she didn't know much English. The language barrier didn't get in the way much for the burgeoning star, as the judges found themselves charmed by her nonetheless. Although she didn't win, she was one of several contestants who ended up being picked out for an opportunity to sign a contract with Universal Studios. She signed with the studio and went on to work with them for the next several years. According to Anita, she put a great deal of work into training with Universal Studios in preparation for film roles that never ended up coming to fruition. After several months of this, the studio decided to cut her loose before finding anything worthwhile to do with her. Still, her time with Universal Studios provided her with a great deal of industry experience, and she left her contract with the studio more poised than ever to find success in the entertainment industry. Anita said she spent most of her time with Universal learning how to ride horses. She made a few minor appearances on the screen during this time, but nothing that managed to turn heads. Following the few months that Anita spent with Universal, she did some modeling work and dated around in the Hollywood social scene. Some of the men she could be seen dating were Yul Brenner and Frank Sinatra, the latter of whom she would go on to work with. After a good deal of treading water in the entertainment industry, Anita finally got her big break thanks to beloved comedian Bob Hope. Eckberg's big break came in the form of a series of USO shows. Marilyn Monroe had originally been scheduled to appear, but ended up needing to be replaced. Desperate for a replacement, Bob Hope turned to Anita Eckberg. She was finally showcased in her element, and the attention she received from this string of USO shows led to the actress being signed to John Wayne's production company. That company was Batjack Productions. Unlike Universal, Batjack Productions was able to figure out how to make Anita Eckberg appeal to audiences. She was cast in films like Bloody Alley and War and Peace. It was the latter feature that gave Anita reason to travel to Rome, where she would receive the most iconic role of her career. Over the course of the 1950s, she appeared in several European pictures while also working with John Wayne in America. After traveling to Italy to film War and Peace, Anita got the idea she'd like to stay there. She ended up getting married, though the marriage was ill-fated. However, her time in Italy ended up paving the way for her to receive her iconic role in the 1960 feature La Dolce Vita. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. And stick around for more about Anita Ekberg. Though fame had eluded Anita Ekberg in Hollywood during her early career, she ended up becoming a major star in Italy fairly soon after first showing up there. By the time of her mid-twenties, she found herself one of the most popular starlets in the region. Her fame was increased by her marriage to Anthony Steele, a British actor. Despite the fact the marriage brought both celebrities a great deal of tabloid exposure, it wasn't the healthiest union. While photographers may have tried to paint Anita and Anthony as a happy couple, it seems there were numerous issues plaguing their marriage. The main issue appears to have been Anthony's alcoholism, which exacerbated his jealousy when it came to his wife. The beauty she was, Anita was no stranger to the male gaze when she went out into public. Anthony found himself constantly picking fights with men who were won over by his wife's charms, and Anita soon grew tired of his attitude. According to Anita, her final meeting with Anthony saw her loan him $100,000 that he never paid back. The two were married from 1956 to 59. Soon after divorcing Anthony Steele, Anita went on to make her iconic appearance in La Dolce Vita. She was cast in the feature after meeting director Federico Fellini in Rome. 
He was so won over by the Swedish starlet, he was said to have cast her in his upcoming feature on the spot. She went on to portray the character of Sylvia Rank in the film. Her performance proved the most successful of her career, thanks in no small part to an iconic scene that featured the actress revealing some staggering cleavage at the Trevi Fountain. The scene took audiences by storm and caused some controversy when the Vatican declared the film was immoral because of it. Shooting the scene was reportedly incredibly difficult for Anita, as it was so cold in the fountain she nearly froze to death. But she made it work. When the Vatican came out with its criticisms of Anita and her cleavage, she didn't let it get to her. Instead, she publicly expressed she was proud of her breasts and glad for the opportunity to have displayed them in the film. Audiences seemed to side with Anita over the Vatican, and the film was a major success. Sadly, her success in the feature ended up being her career peak, as it was only downhill for the actress after La Dolce Vita. She continued to work consistently over the course of the 60s, appearing in both European pictures and some notable American ones. Her European pictures included the Mongols and Behind Closed Doors. Meanwhile, she could be seen acting stateside in a variety of movies alongside notable Rat Pack figures. She appeared in Four for Texas alongside Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin, and later alongside Jerry Lewis in the 1966 comedy Way Way Out. The 1970s wasn't as kind to the Swedish actress. She began having to appear in B-movies to make ends meet, with some of her most notable work during that time being in European schlock films with names like Gold of the Amazon Woman and Killer Nun. She also went through a divorce in the mid-70s, having married second husband Rick Van Nutter in 1963. In the 80s, she began working less often, instead relegating herself into a life of semi-retirement in Rome. Not much was heard about the actress over the course of the 90s, but a series of illnesses over the course of the 2000s made the public remember who she was. She found herself routinely in the hospital during that decade and was even robbed during one of her long hospital visits. By the end of the 2000s, she was broke and far from the star who had risen to prominence decades before. Anita passed away in January 2015. She had spent most of her adult life in Italy, but ended up being cremated and buried in Sweden upon her death. Although the actress's staggering cleavage isn't nearly as controversial as it was back in the day, folks can still enjoy looking at photos of the actress during her prime. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know the Vatican condemned La Dolce Vita? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.